G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to part two of OpenBSD 6.1, installing a graphical user interface. Now, a couple of uh, things you're gonna have to do uh, initially before you set up a desktop GUI. And for this, we're gonna use XFCE because I've done it many times in the past, I know how to do it. The first thing you've gotta do is once you've installed Nano and everything else, you're then gonna to need to set up a couple of extra bits and pieces and you need to do this in root. So you need to log in as root to do it. The first thing you've gotta do is go user, what is it, user mod, dash, oops, dash, capital G, and then your user, which is that. Now, there's a reason you gotta do this, is so that the your user can have access to the GUI as well. Done. Now, if you have not set up OpenBSD off an HTTP setup, the next thing you've gotta do is type, I'm doing this from notes so I remember how to do it. Um, oh, no, that's not right. Even I know that's not right. Underscore path equals now. This is just the default one. Oh. Okay, now let me explain this if it'll focus, which it's not going to, but if you installed OpenBSD from a CD, so you didn't do it off HTTP, you're going to need to set that up. Now you can do it from your nearest mirror, this is the default mirror, but it doesn't matter. Um, and that'll set your ex that'll set your package path in the future. Now, because we've already done HTTP install, we can forget about that one. So the next thing to do, oh, and also if you have had to export your package path, you'll need to add that package path into uh, dot profile under the root directory and the same under the user directory in the future. So, but if you've done it via HTTP, you can skip that step. So the next thing we need to do is uh, obviously add the GUI. So we go PKG or PKG underscore add minus IV. You can see it there, my camera's struggling to focus, but hopefully you'll be able to get the gist of it. And we're gonna do XFCE. So it's getting FXCE 4.12. All right, now this will take a while to install. So once it's installed, we'll come back. Okay, so XFCE is now installed. So the next thing you want to install is the slim themes. So you go PKG add minus install verbosity and it is slim slim dash themes. Okay, you can see it there. It's 
pretty easily done. Okay. Now, once this is done, this is where Nano comes in extremely handy. So the next thing you want to do is go Nano. Now, you need to be in your root directory to do this. And if you're not sure, you can always go ls. And we are in the root directory. So we go nano dot x i n i t r c. You see it there? And you type in e x e c s t a r t x f c e four. Like that. All right. Control X. You obviously want to save it. Right. And once you've done all that, you then need to go back to, you need to go CD slash home slash your user hasn't done it again. CD home, oop, CD slash home slash your user. Alright, so we're now in the user folder, as you can see here, and you do the same thing again. So you go that, and you go exec start xfce4. All right, so this is in your user folder. You want to save it. Those who know how to use Nano. I'm reading from my notes here. Oh, I've done it again. Hang a minute. Damn it, here we go. Hang on. The mouse decided to store me. All right. So now you've done all that, you need to go nano slash etc slash rc.local. Okay. There's your rc.local. And you add slash usr slash local. slash bin, slash slim dash d. There is that. You save that. Okay, so that's now saved. I'm just scrolling through my notes here. I'll put a link to all this in the description below. And it works from OpenBSD 5.9 to 6.1. The next thing you've got to do is go nano slash etc slash rc.conf.local. I've got a typo there. rc.local.com Sorry. I'll get it right in a minute. C O N F dot L O C A L. Okay, so you need to go to that next. And you add. Uh, where is it again? Okay, so you add P K G underscore. KG underscore scripts equals quotation marks DBUS underscore Damon space Avahe Avahi, sorry 
underscore Damon. Close quotation. Okay. Go down from that. You add dbus underscore enable equals yes okay you can pause all the way through this okay you get out of that you save it make sure you save everything of this because otherwise it won't work okay so we've now set up xfce now we've already got Firefox, so now we will get um, uh, we'll get VLC, we'll get GIMP, and we'll get Thunderbird. Okay. Oop, oh, I forgot a letter there. Okay. So they're a list of some of the apps that we're going to download and install right now. Okay. Now, remembering, this is going to get it straight from our existing embedded package path that we did during the HTTP install. All right, so once this has all come back and all, well, I should say once all this is installed, we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right, so VLC, GIMP, and Thunderbird are all installed. Now, for any extra documentation, you can look in there for everything. The next thing you need to do, <coughs> once you've got all this done, before you boot into XFCE, and I recommend this, is type syspatch. And this will just make sure that your system is completely patched. And we've got some updates. I need to do mine as well. So this is just patching some new stuff that's uh, coming out. Now this this is vital. You need to sys patch the system. I've just realised I need to sys patch my own system. And as I said, this is vital because this will update all everything that needs to be done. All right, so once this is done, we'll come back. Okay, so the system's now being patched. So the next thing to do now is reboot. Oops. I've got to get the console. So it'll now go into a reboot state. Now, I'm just going to let you in on something. Uh, KDE. Now, there is KDE for it as well. I haven't done KDE as an auto boot. Um, but what I've done with KDE in the past is I've just said to it to... Um, uh, I've started KDE4 from within the terminal window. So if you want, you can install KDE, and there is XFCE. All right, so I'll now take you into XFCE. I'm just going to use root. Okay, and here is the XFCE desktop. Now what I suggest you do here is just use the default config. And there is XFCE. Now it's a min minimalistic desktop, but it's enough to give you some sort of GUI environment. But just remember, 
Most of what OpenBSD does, if you're going to use it in, in a server environment, is going to be done through the terminal. But if you're going to use it as a daily driver, there's, uh, there's everything you need up there. Now, you'll still have to add packages through... Um, you can see here we've got a bit of Office, but if you want, you can duck into a terminal and add um, PKG minus IV... Uh, LibreOffice, if you wish. So there's how to set up OpenBSD and also how to set up XFCE. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.